Hey everyone, in today's video, I'll be going over my Versace Warrior build. I'm calling it this because it looks very similar to the designer brand Versace. With the black and gold color scheme, I think that name fits it perfectly. And I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda jokes. I had a blast putting this together, but let me know what your thoughts are of it. Now, this build isn't just for looks either. You hit like an absolute truck and you absorb damage like a tank. Looking at this, you're probably thinking, how are you absorbing damage? Your character looks fragile as fuck. But the looks are deceiving on this one. So with this setup, you get not only good looks, you get really good damage and really good protection. But don't worry, I'm going to dive into all of those. Don't forget to subscribe for more weekly content. I also have a Discord setup for anyone looking for more people to play with. The link to that and other Elden Ring related videos will be in the description down below. With the weapons, we have two options to choose from that are both really effective in their own ways. One of them being Roger's Rapier. It's extremely nice looking matching the gold color scheme while having a fast attacking moveset, really good range, and a unique heavy attack that other rapiers just don't get. The difference in heavy attacks is Roger's Rapier does two quick thrusting attacks versus regular rapiers that do one really strong thrust. We're also going to be using the Ash of War Seppuku with the bleed variation. So we want to attack as fast as possible to proc a blood loss because that stuff does a lot of damage. In addition, since it attacks so fast and scales pretty well with dex, I like to use Millicent's Prothesis. It's a talisman that increases our damage with successive attacks and gives us 5 levels in dex. So we get a nice little damage buff out of this. For the other weapon, we can also use the Cross Naginata. It's a spear, so it's going to have some really good range and do more physical damage than the rapier. The main drawback to this is it doesn't look as nice and the attack speed is a bit slower. We're still using the Seppuku Ash of War, but instead of the bleed variation, I'm using Occult. This makes the weapon's main damage scale with Arcane while still increasing our bleed buildup by a bit. So you have the option to have a faster attack speed to proc blood loss much quicker or a longer reaching weapon that does more physical damage while still being able to proc a blood loss as well. Personally, I tend to bounce back and forth between the two weapons because having options makes it so much more fun. Another talisman that works amazingly well with this setup is the Lord of Blood's Exultation. It increases my attack damage by 20% whenever a blood loss procs near me. And that includes when we use the Ash of Or Seppuku on ourselves, so we can get that damage buff right away before we even get into the fight. Moving on to our offhand, I'm using the Brass Shield. I'm pretty sure it's the best medium tier shield you can get, and again, it just matches the look so well I had to use it. Now the guard boost isn't anything crazy. Yes, it'll block physical attacks completely, but we are still going to lose stamina doing so. But I found a way around this. If you use the Ash of War Barricade, you can completely block all physical attacks no problem without draining any stamina at all. I'm also using the Great Shield Talisman to increase the guard boost some more, and the Erd Tree's Favor which does wonders for us. It increases our maximum stamina, health, and equip load by a decent amount. It's just a good all around talisman to use. With how to maximize this setup, it's really simple and similar to a tank build I made before. The difference between the two builds though is one will do more damage but have less protection versus the other one which is the opposite. I'll put a link in the description down below if you want to check that out afterwards. With using the rapier or spear, first apply the seppuku ash of war to your weapon to maximize the bleed buildup. Then when you're in combat, you can block and attack at the same time using either one of these weapons. Again, doing both at the same time does drain stamina, but when you see your opponent is about to attack you, that's when you want to use the shield's Ash of War barricade. This just makes your character absorb all of that damage without losing any stamina. The downside to this is it only lasts for 6 seconds, but timing it is really easy. It's similar to parrying, but not as difficult. You can also bug this a bit to skip the Ash of War animation completely. You just have to time it even better, so right when they're about to hit your shield, that's when you use the Ash of War and it automatically applies it to your shield in an instance. Just a little helpful trick. Next, let's take a look at the armor. So I went with the twinned helmet that has a really nice gold slash brass-ish kind of look to it to really match the rest of the armor's gold trim. You could also use the Sanguine Noble Hood, which matches the look just as well, 
but personally, I just like the twinned helmet a bit more. The rest of the armor are all pieces from the Malekith set, but nothing here gives any special bonuses or buffs. It's all simply just for looks. Lastly, we have the Flask of Wondrous Physic. For this, I'm just using the Green Burst Crystal tier, which increases my stamina recovery speed, and the Dexterity Crystal Knot tier. This one increases my dex by 10 levels, which also increases my damage by a bit, because the rapier scales really well with dex. For the stat requirements, you'll need a minimum of 16 strength and 20 dex to use all of the weapons and the shield. Afterwards, I would recommend putting majority of your points into Arcane, so the Cross Naginita will do more physical damage and have a faster bleed buildup on both of your weapons. That's everything for today's video. I'm going to put links in the description down below if you want to check out and find all of the gear and items for yourself. I'd also like to give a big thanks to the members of my channel for supporting me on my videos and the future ones to come. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.